שבוע טוב, we're continuing, ברוך השם, ספר הושע, פרק ד', so, um, פרק ג', that we saw last week, was very, very short, it only had five פסוקים, but as we saw, it was a very hard פרק to read, because it was basically um, the second round of um, הושע, learning, learning what relationship uh, between Am Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how God feels about the relationship. And we saw that it's a terrible relationship. God feels uh, that he's married to a prostitute. God feels that Am Yisrael is behaving like a Eshet Znunim, Men Ha'efet, as we saw there in Perek Gimel Pasuk Aleph. And um, and, he, and he really wants Hoshea to really feel how he's feeling. Why? The only uh, only answer I can come up with is because that's the only thing that can create enough of a emotion in a human being to go ahead and try to do something about it. Try to go ahead and use all the talents that he has to go and persuade Am Yisrael um, to, uh, to repent, to really go back on Derech HaYashar. But uh, at the end of the Perek, we saw Yamim Rabim, Yeshu Bnei Yisrael, right? for a very long time, they will be desolate, they will be without any king, they will be without any anything really, but it will all end well. Why? Because Am Yisrael will repent, right? The last pasuk, Achar Yashu Bnei Yisrael, Uvikshu et Adonai Elohihem et David Malkam. The word is Bikshu, Bakasha, meaning it comes from the Am. It doesn't come from God. In general, when we look at the entire corpus of the Tanakh, any time Am Yisrael needs help, it has to come from them, and then Hashem will come down and swoop and help. We see that also in Yitziat Mitzrayim. Vayizaku b'nei Yisrael, God comes down and, and saves the day. Even though God sees, even though God sees what's going on, Vayera Hashem, He sees what goes on, but it has to come from, from us. There's no, there's no force. Uh, uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu does not ever force Himself on Am Yisrael. Although, uh, we're, because we're supposed to get there, you know, uh, uh, on our own. We're supposed to see the Der Chayashar. Um, and this really, I think this is a very important message. Um, and, and we, most of us, um, we try to, we tried, and we try to be that way as parents. We want our kids to um, to live a, 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 a good life, a straightforward, righteous life. We want them to live a, a life that has meaning. God, too, wants us all, Am Yisrael, to live a life that has meaning. And the only life that has meaning for us, for Jewish people, is to live a life of Torah and Mitzvot. If you don't live a life of Torah and Mitzvot, then you're not really living properly as a Jew. Yes, you can be a good human being, you can be a, a, a wonderful human being by not observing Torah and Mitzvot, but that's not what God wants. God doesn't want Jews to live a life void of Torah and Mitzvot. And that is a, 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 a basic, it's the foundation of Yahadut. It really is. Um, and we see that throughout the entire Torah. Right? If you don't listen to God, meaning if you don't listen to the Torah and Mitzvot, then A, B, C, D will happen to you. Not because um, God wants to punish us, because we're not living the life that we should be living. The Havdil Afei Avdalot you know, if you see a really good friend having trouble or having a hard time, and you want that person, you feel for that person, you want that person to feel good, to live a good life for them, not for you. God wants us to live a good life for us. And that's basically what he's trying to teach Hosea. He wants to teach Hosea that a proper marriage is one when there's mutual love. A proper marriage is one where, you know, they want to be together. Not being together, but separate. Locked in like a jail. That's how God feels. God feels that Am Yisrael is just not there. He did what he was supposed to do, but they're not reciprocating. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. And, and that's really what we're going to be seeing now in Perek Dalet. In Perek Dalet, finally, we're getting to the first Tochecha, the first Perek that actually talks about what went wrong. What were they doing that was so wrong that mirrored the... Um, the type of uh, of um, zugiut, the marriage that Am Yisrael had with Hashem versus Hoshea and this and this eshet zlunim. So let's go right into Perek Dalet Pasuk Aleph, 
And we're going to finally see what God deems important. What does God deem important enough that without it, God wants to leave? He's not interested in, in continuing um, the, to, be, to, be a, to be a couple with Am Yisrael. So he says the following. Perek Dalet, Pasuk Aleph. Shim'u dvar Adonai b'nei Yisrael. Right? That's what he says. He says, this is what God is accusing Am Yisrael uh, for doing. Kiriv ladunai im yoshvei ha'aretz. Ki en emet, ve'en chesed, ve'en da'at Elohim ba'aretz. En emet, en chesed, en da'at Elohim ba'aretz. What is he saying? He's saying that there's no faithfulness. Am Yisrael is not faithful to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Um, Am Yisrael has no love of the land of Eretz Yisrael. And the people have absolutely no knowledge of God as the God of the universe, God of, of Israel. That's that's the claim. That is the suit. That is what God is suing Am Yisrael. saying, here's my, I'm accusing you of those three things. Right? Now, if you notice, in, um, in Perek, if you go back to Perek, Bet, Pasuk Kaf Aleph, go back to Perek Bet, Pasuk Kaf Aleph, famous words that that uh, the men amongst us say every single day, almost every single day, except for days that we don't put on tefillin. We say, Ve'erestich li olam, Ve'erastich li betzedek uv'mishpat uv'chesed uv'achamim, if you look at the Pesukim and you go back to Perak Dalit, Pasuk Aleph, you'll see that it's exactly the same morals that we don't follow versus the morals that God wants us to follow. Emet, Chesed, and Dat Elokim. So that is the main accusation that God had towards Am Yisrael. They're all morals. They're upholding basic morals. It's not even about observing Shabbat. It's not even. It's not observing Pesach. It's not observing, you know, um, you know, Anuchi Hashem. It's ki. And it, uh, sorry, it's not observing, um, the, you know, mitzvot of of um, of uh, uh, of the other yamim tovim sukkot. It's emet, chesed, and machshava. I don't usually do this, but I do want to bring a famous abarbanel on these psukim of ki en emet. And Chesed, and Da'at Elohim Ba'aretz, the Barbanel basically says, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase, basically says that the relationship God has with Am Yisrael is the same kind of a relationship that a homeowner has with someone who's renting his home but is not paying his rent. So what happens? You're allowing somebody to live in your home and you have a, you have a contract with that person for two years, three years, five years, ten years. And in the contract, he has to uphold his side of the bargain. The main the main important part of the of the of the contract is he has to pay monthly or pay weekly or pay per year, whatever the, the contract, you know, they have, whatever the agreement is about. So Ruvain rents an apartment from Shimon, and now comes the first of the month, and Ruven doesn't pay. He doesn't pay. Shimon calls him up and says, look, Reuven, I see you didn't pay. Maybe the check bounce, check it out to see what's going on. You know, I'll give you a couple more days. I understand it might be difficult for you. Two days pass, three days pass, a week passes. Shimon calls Reuven and says, Reuven, you didn't pay. What's going on? Right? I mean, come on, you know, you got to pay. I'm letting you live in my home. Reuven says, don't worry, don't worry. Another month passed, he doesn't pay. Shimon's getting really, really frustrated, so much so that he calls his lawyer. He says, look, my tenant is not paying what I do. And the lawyer starts saying, well, let's look at the contract. Let's see what the consequences is. The consequences is he doesn't pay. He has three months. And if he doesn't, he gets evacuated. He continues to not pay. But he doesn't want to leave. He wants to live in the apartment and he doesn't want to leave. What kind of relationship does the homeowner have now with this tenant? He doesn't want him there. But if he's willing to pay, he wants him to stay. But he's not paying. But he can't kick him out because, unfortunately, according to the laws in Israel, 
it, that's very difficult to kick somebody out. So what do you do? It's a terrible relationship. Everyone is upset. No one is happy. Besides the tenant, because he's living and he's not paying up. And that's what Akadosh Baruch Hu, that's what Abar Benes says that Hashem is saying to Am Yisrael. You guys, you're living in the country that I gave you. I gave you life. I gave you sustenance. I gave you everything you need. But you're not paying your rent. What is the rent? Not money. It's emet, chesed, and da'at elokim. It's all I'm asking at this point. Morals, faithfulness, emet, chesed. Do charitable things. Help people. Be there for your friends. Be there for your neighbors. Chesed. And acknowledge me. I am the homeowner. Just acknowledge my existence. Even that you don't do. You're living scot-free and you don't even acknowledge that it's owned by me. So God is upset. There's a marriage, but 50, but my kala, Am Yisrael, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And dat elokim. By the way, uh, just an interesting insight into emet, chesed, and dat elokim. Um, emet that we're talking about here is very, very interesting. If you look at the word emet, you take all of the uh, otiot of uh, the Hebrew of the Hebrew uh, uh, alphabet, including the otiot sofiot, like pei, fei. We got twenty-seven. So aleph is the first first letter. Taf is the last letter. Mem is right smack in the middle. It's number fourteen out of twenty-seven. So it's not exactly the middle because right, but it's mamash smack in the middle. Emet covers everything, and that's the first thing that God puts puts up, emet. Because emet represents the reality. It presents what we see. And Am Yisrael are living in a false reality. They're living in a, an imaginary world where God doesn't exist, where they don't have to do anything. They don't have to follow the contract. That's why God is upset. Because you're not feeling, you're fulfilling your side of the bargain. The end dat elokim ba'avetz. So there's no emet, which is bedibur. There's no chesed b'maaseh, and there's no dat elokim b'machshava. They're lacking everything. That's not a partnership, and therefore you cannot stay here. But he continues. He says in pasuk bet, more accusations. This is how you are. Alo vechachesh veratzoach veganov venaof paratzu vedamim bedamim nagau. They make promises in Allah, right? It's a promise, like a neder, but they break them. They don't even keep their promises. What kind of human being does that? Well, if they don't have emet, then I can understand why they don't keep their promises. Somebody who doesn't have basic form of emet of truth, they don't even follow. They don't, they, of course they're going to promise and break them. They lie. They lie. They murder. They steal. And they commit adultery. Those are from Aseret Adibrot. Right? Amazing. The basics of the basics. They don't follow. That's what Akadosh Baruch was saying. These crimes, paratsu vedamim bedamim nagau, they increase, and there's no one uh, to to answer for. One murder after the next. Damim bedamim nagau. Damim here means dam, not kesef. Damim bedamim. There's no din velo dayan. People are doing whatever they want to do. So we have, first of all, emet, chesed, and da'at, elokim, which is the foundation of humanity, morals. And then we have aseret adibrot. So let's think about this for a second. Because this, according to Hosea, this is how Bnei Yisrael were, were, uh, were behaving. I don't know if people watch movies here or not, but go to the last movie you saw that, you know, sometime in the you know, the, the 12th period, uh, you know, the 12th century, 6th century, 15th century, you know, uh, the Christians, uh, you know, and, and the Romans and the Greeks, you know, they basically do whatever they want to do. They kill when they don't get what they want. They murder when they don't get what they want. They steal. They take what doesn't belong to them, right? 
there's no emet, they lie, there's no charity, there's no chesed, people take from the poor all the time. That's how, according to Hosea, that's how Am Yisrael were behaving. When I say Am Yisrael, I'm talking about Mamlechet Hatzafon, I'm talking about the ten tribes, I'm not talking about Yehuda. Remind yourselves, we're not talking about Yerushalayim at this point, we're not talking about Yehuda, which is the uh, southern uh, kingdom, right? Malchut Yehuda, we're talking about Malchut Israel, all the way up north. This is who they are. And therefore, Al Ken, God says, what am I supposed to do? When not only you're not upholding the contract, right? You're not paying up your rent, right? You're not doing your, I have to take away the land from you. Because that's what a renter does. That's what a, a homeowner does when, when the person's not paying their rent. Al Ken Te'aval Ha'aretz. What does Te'aval Ha'aretz? The land will dry up. It will be a drought. Everything that lives on it will die. The umlal kol ba. Everyone, not not just human beings. When there's a drought, when there's no water, when the land dries up, there's no vegetation. The the uh, the animals perish as well. Ube ofashamayim too. The gam de hayam yaseifu. All the animals, the birds, and even the fish will die. Why? Because you're not paying your rent. I'm taking it away from you. You don't deserve a country. You don't deserve to live scot-free in the land that I gave you when you're not upholding your side of the bargain. Mamash. Um, I'm just going to ask, I think, the elephant in the room, and that is Am Yisrael today. Hashem gave us back our country in 1948, and we've been protecting it, we've been working it, we've been doing what we're supposed to be doing, a lot of us. But a lot of us are not. Mamash, a lot of us are not. And there is a, a you know, people, people like to tag that those who are not observant, meaning not Shomrei Torah Mitzvot, are Tinokot Shenishbu. They can't, they don't know any better. And we have to love them, and they're good Jews, and it's true, they are. They're wonderful people, some of them, some of them not, some Datim are great, some Datim are not so great. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about just Shmirat Torah Mitzvot. Right? It's one of the Tnaim that God says, that is one of the things, Vehaya im That's what God says. Being Jewish means following Torah Mitzvot. That's what it means. That's why my heart goes out to all those Shiyotzim in Haderich. All those that can't you know, all those children and, and grown-ups alike that were religious and they leave it, they're missing something great in their world. Can you blame them? There's something going on. There's something wrong, not with them specifically, but there's something wrong in general with all of Am Yisrael. Kol Yisrael arivim ze We are all, every one of us, is responsible for another Jew, for all Jewish people. Therefore, we're really clumped together as one. God is not zooming in on one individual or the next. There is Parshanu that tried to say that we're talking about the time of Izevel and Achav and those, but I think here God is looking at the bigger picture. God is teaching us about the bigger picture. We are one. We are supposed to be united as one. It's not about the particulars, about you know this individual and that individual. It's about Am Yisrael as a whole. And this is your behavior. You are killing. You are lying. You are dying. You are there's no emet, no chesed, nothing. And therefore, God has to take away the land. Right? That's what he says. And then everything will die. Kind of something that already happened before. If you recall, the second parasha of Sefer Bereshit, Parashat Noach, where Am Yisrael were, were also terrible. And God says, I have to do a, re, a redo, I have, re, I have to redo the world again. And there's a mabul. That's what's happening here from a religious point of view. There, it was immorally, immorality. There it was, you know, men, women, and animals who are just completely misbehaving as, as humans and as animals. Whereas here, in our in our perik, in Hosef Roshea, God is saying, you don't deserve this country that I gave you. This country is holy. It has kedusha to it. It really has kedusha. That's why we have special mitzvot, mitzvot shetluyot ba'aretz, shmita. 
But when you don't behave, you don't deserve it. That's what Hoshea is teaching us. So there's a drought and no one is happy. So Hashem says, let no one accuse any other person. I'm not accused, because that's what happens. You know, you say, oh, it's his fault. It's his fault. It's their fault. It's, it's their fault. It's not, God is saying, don't do that. Right? You can't accuse any other people for reprimand them. God's complete. Hello, can you hear me? <clears throat> Harry calling. Can you hear me? We hear you. Who is we? Yeah. Hear me? Harry Ullman. Oh, hello, Harry. How are you? I'm enjoying it. But I, I can't understand what you're suggesting because all these facts, which you just say, which our shares, the Abu is doing, is no real recorded at all. You know nothing about these things being happening. All you know is what how share what you say how share is saying. That's all. I mean, yes. what, uh, I don't know where you get it from. I'm getting it from Moshe. Israel is not doing all this, perhaps. I'm getting it from Moshe. What? I'm getting it from Moshe. I believe. <clears throat> him. I believe him. Yeah, well, nobody else knows about all this. <laughs> They do. Right. We'll see. Well, no, they do. We'll see. They do. I think okay. it's. I think it was. I think it was. You know. I. Th I think I, I do. Look, there's about two thousand five and two thousand eight hundred years. Uh, this happened a long time ago, so I yes. wasn't there. So I have to. Yes. I have to see what Hoshea says. What Hoshea is teaching us. What Hoshea is telling us. What happened. Okay. Okay. So let's continue. So God is saying. God is saying, oh, so first of all, uh, Rabbi Oates, yes. question, it's Sarah, um, is there no schar for those like today? We have a lot of people who are shown Ramit's votes in Torah, and there's, we know, half the country isn't, half the country is, or let's just say, there's, is there schar for that? I mean, are we all doomed be, in the time of, of Hosea? Were there any that were Shomrei Mitzvot? Was everybody doomed? Are we all responsible, even if we are keeping the Torah, for those who aren't keeping the Torah? That's a very, very good question that you ask. It's a Hard question. question. <laughs> no, it's a question that is asked um, when it comes to um, you know, the, the famous questions of Tzadik Deralo, Tovlo, but your question is more, is the mi'ut, those who are, you know, um, wh why is the majority have all the power here? What about, right? That's what you're saying. I mean, if, what about those who are observant? Those who are, right. why should they, you know, be punished because of those who are who are wicked? Those who are, you know, not right. emet, not chesed. So I think the answer is, it might, it might not sound fair to us, but Hakadosh Baruch Hu does judge Am Yisrael many times as one, as a as a one big family. Although on a personal level, God will also judge each person individually. So I think, I mean, I think the same. You know, we 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 see that also in Mitzrayim. We saw that all over the place, where unfortunately the righteous sometimes are absorbed by the majority. We saw that with Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu, if you recall, when he was arguing with God regarding Sdom Amura, when did he stop arguing? He stopped at 10. Right. Recall? He stopped yeah. at 10. Yes, yes. Why didn't he not stop at 1 or 2 or at 5? What about, because he <clears> realizes <throat> that unfortunately... The way the world works, the way God works in this world, according to many, many um, Jewish philosophers, is that, yeah, unfortunately, we, God judges Am Yisrael as an Am, although he also judges each individual personally as well. Um, so someone who is righteous will indeed be judged that way, but he will be absorbed within the greater part of Am Yisrael. That's why there's a mitzvah tochiach, for instance. The mitzvah tochiach is a very, very important mitzvah that many of us do not follow for many, many reasons. 
But the main reason is because we convince ourselves, oh, they're not going to listen to me anyway, so why, did, why should I even bother? And halakhically, if indeed you see somebody doing something wrong, and you know that if you say something, they're not going to care, and they're going to continue doing it, then why waste your breath? And therefore, halakhically, you don't have a chiyuv to be mukhiyah. But a lot of us, we just jump right there. We don't even try. We are, we are, important. We are responsible for one another. We really are. Um, and I think that's that's a message that needs to echo more and more. We have to realize that we can't we can't sit on the law sidelines as good people and not do anything. We can't. That's a very important message, and I'm happy you you asked the question, Sarah, because I think that is really what God wants of us. Mila Hashem Elai, Shevet Levi says, and they did something about it. They could have just stood there and done nothing, but they didn't. They needed to be po'el eman hakadosh baruch hu. So therefore, we're also did as well. Who said they didn't do anything at all? They should have stopped it a long time before. Levi, why? What, what they were watching this all happening, and then you tell me at the end they didn't do anything. <laughs> well, it's too late. I mean, the fact is that they they were they were there before. They were, they were all, all these things were happening. And they did do, they didn't seem to do anything at all. It could be, but I think there's a slogan that says better late than never. Huh? I agree with you. They might they sh maybe should have they you know Aaron according to as well. But either yeah. way, that's what that's what Oshea is uh, let's go back to Sefer Oshea. That's what Oshea is basically saying. He's saying that God is first of all coming, but he's coming to the Kohanim and saying, You Kohanim, you guys are at fault. I don't want you, Am Yisrael, blaming one another because you're all at fault. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to blame the Kohanim. And that's what he says. First of all, Kimirivei Kohen, he says in Pasuk Dalid. He says, ah, my complaint is against you, the priests. Why? Vechashalta ayom, Pasuk Hei. Vechashal gam navi imecha laila vedimiti imecha. He says, night and day, you Kohanim, you blundered on. And the prophets do know better than you. There were many prophets. It wasn't just one or two. There were many prophets are the Gdolim prophets are the, the people that are spiritual prophets that he's talking about are people that have knowledge and they have the obligation to be mochiach, but they're not doing their jobs today too. And, and you know, this is something that I think is important to say. We have in our nation, Baruch Hashem, many, many, many Rabbanim. A lot of Rabbanim. And I'm going to share something that does pain me a little bit. And I'm really going to knock. I don't want to go into politics. And please, if you disagree with what I'm saying, uh, I'm saying it just to 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 bring to, to to teach a point. I received in my email box a request asking me to sign a document. There is now, I don't know if everyone is aware about it, but soon there will be elections for Rav Rashi. Rav Rashi le Medinat Israel. And at the moment, any Rav who is older than 70 years old is not eligible to become the Rav HaRashi Israel. Why? I don't know exactly the reasons, but as far as I understand, there's a law that forbids any Rav who is older than 70 to become a, a Rav Rashi. Okay? There is, however, one Rav that is older than 70, and he could be a great candidate. He could be a great Rav, but unfortunately, he's not eligible. So I was asked, like many of my peers, to sign a document saying that we think that they should take away the obstacle of 70 years, 70 years old. Why? Because today we've had we've had we've had in the past a president of Medinat Israel who was what 80, 81, 82. How old was Perez, right? If he can be a president, there's no reason why a Rav Rashi can't be older than 70 if he's intact, if he's healthy, etc. And it it turned out, I don't I don't like signing these kinds of things, but it turned out that whoever signed signed, and it was published, and maybe you've got you you've seen it. It was in Makorishon. Why am I bringing this up? Because there's so many other burning issues that all the rabbis should get together and scream about. They should yell about. They should yell. They should do. But they don't do that. 
Instead, they get together for things like, you know, we should take away the obstacle of 70 years old. That, to me, I, I was, I, I don't like that. You know, you're using all your power to do that instead of using the power to do greater things for Am Yisrael. How about all the Rabbanim should get together and start screaming and saying, no, we're not, we're not going to continue to do anything until Am Yisrael, until the left and the right decide to talk to each other. But I didn't hear that. Not all the Rabbanim. So that is the ta'ana that God has to the Kohanim. It says, you are the Kohanim. You are in charge. And he's talking to the leaders, the leadership, the Nevi'im. Why are you not doing anything? You're not getting up and standing up for emet, for chesed, for dat. You're just being righteous on the sidelines. And maybe that answers your question, Sarah, regarding what ha what's happening today and what Hosea is talking about. I it agree with you. Rav Stav is the only rabbi I've heard say anything today. Yeah, how come not all them? Why are they That's not going to stop? Where are the leaders? Yes. So we, yeah. therefore, we are also at fault. And therefore, that's why God is saying, I don't want you, you to argue with each other who's at fault. I am telling you that the leadership, the spiritual leadership, he's not talking about the kings. He's talking about the Kohanim. And we know at this time, the Kohanim and the Levim were given the task of Yerucha Torah, Torah Yerucha, right? They're supposed to teach us Torah. So he's blaming them because of the spiritual people. And I'm sure there were. And we're talking about Hundreds of thousands of people in Mamlech in Malchut Israel. There were definitely people that were good people, but they're on the sidelines. They're not going on the rooftops and yelling out, We need a met, chesed, tzedek, mishpat. So, where are they? So, therefore, they're also at fault. So, God is saying, I am telling you who's at fault here the spiritual leadership, those who are, who have the koach. He says in Pasuk, you have. You failed. Pasuk Vav continues, because of that, because of you, nidmu ami mibli hada'at. My people now are doomed because they do not have any knowledge of me. You didn't even teach them properly. The leadership are supposed to be an example for the people. But if they failed to be an example for the people, then the people aren't growing. If they're not teaching the people Torah mitzvot, they're not going out there, then how can you how can you blame them? So God is saying there's a higher there's, 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 the way things work is that I, I I divided you all into shvatim and I gave specific uh, orders to shevet levi to the kohanim the spiritual ones and you're, they're not doing their job. Ki maasta and then a really hard, difficult uh, uh, um, sentence. So therefore, my people are doomed, right? Because they do not have knowledge of me. And the Kohanim have refused to teach about me. They reject my teachings themselves. And therefore, I reject you. And I will not have any knowledge of your sons. I will not have any knowledge of you as well. So it's mamash mida keneged mida. And that's why Hashem wanted Hoshea to feel that. Al -boyo. How could Hoshea marry a prostitute? How can he create a home with somebody who is unfaithful? That is God, that's what God's saying. How can, I, how can I give you and help you with, um, with Eret Israel when you're not following what you should be following? You're looking at other, other doctors. You're looking at other ways of life. You're looking at avodat elilim. You're looking at other the shomronim. And we'll see in a minute. He starts to go through the different, the different hataim, um, the different sins of Am Yisrael. Let's go a little bit more. Pasuk Zayin. He says, Kerubam ken chatuli, kvodam. Bekalon Amir. He says that the more of you, right? Terubam, the more of you, uh, the more priests that there are, the more spiritual um, leadership there is, right? Ken Chatuli, the more they sin against me. 
because everybody wants to be a rav. Everybody wants to have a, a place to lead. Everybody wants the chair. So at the end of the day, they're fighting to get another chair. They're fighting to, to get kavod, to get honor. They're not doing their job. So they're sinning towards the Kadosh Baruch Hu. They're not doing their job towards their people. And therefore, bekalon amir. Right? This should be a warning to all of the people in leadership positions that if you don't do your job, you become the, the problem. You become the reason. Having a position of power comes with responsibility. But he's saying that these leaders, they just want the power. They just want the honor. They just want the chair. And when they don't do what they're supposed to be doing, they become the reason why Am Yisrael sinned. They become the reason why Am Yisrael is not flourishing. Why Am Yisrael is not really believing in the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Why? Because they're not doing their jobs. The leadership were chosen to lead. But if you're not leading, then there's no leadership. If there's no leadership, then they crumble. And if they crumble, they will be unfaithful. If they're unfaithful, they leave God. When they leave God, God says, I can't be married to you anymore. So it's a it's it's a constant cycle where he now is 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 blaming the leadership. God is saying he's first pinpointing the problem with the leaders. And and in truth, that's that's the problem we have today. And it seems that we know about that because we keep on trying to find the leader that can lead us to a better place. So we have, we know what the solution is. We just can't find somebody that is good for Am Yisrael. Uh, even, even these past elections, again, without getting to leadership, when finally we got a, 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 a bigger majority than we've had in the, in the past five or six years, I think it was 64, uh, right? Even then it didn't work because of a constant, constant battle and fights. So it's a problem. So that's one of the reasons God is saying for the situation that we're at. And he says, but he says, the more leaders we have, the, the problem is because it's ego, ego against ego, and therefore we don't really get anywhere. Chatat ami yochelu, he says, in Pasuk Chet, right? You grow rich from sins of my people. Chatat ami yochelu, you're eating, you're going rich, you're, you're just enjoying the sin, right? Because let's face it, when people are in places of power, they enjoy that power. It goes to their heads. They, it's kind of like food, right? The more power you get, the more you want. And therefore, you forget about why you were even there. It becomes all about the power. It becomes about, you know, you being the big boss. You being the one who can boss people around. But what about actually being the leader, helping those who are need, who are, who, are, who, who need help? Chatat ami yochelu ve'el avonam yisu nafsho, he says. So that's what you want. Then you will cause more sin and more and more and more. And you will end up suffering, right? You will end up suffering the same punishment as the people themselves. Because at the end of the day, if you're a leader, but you don't have anybody to lead, then you're not really a leader at the end of the day. You have nobody. So what are you fighting for? What kind of leader do you want to be if you don't lead your people? So really, it's a, it's it's also kind of like a lesson in leadership that a you know I was I was talking to somebody a a true a true uh, a true leader is a mesharet a shamish a true leader does for just continues to do for others that's what that's what leaders do and that's what Hashem is teaching us. God says, you will suffer the same punishment. It's a midah keneged midah. Now, if we go back to the mashal with Hosea that we learned in Perek Gimel, if you recall, we go back to Pasuk, Pasuk Gimel, Perek Gimel, Pasuk Gimel, God is saying to Hosea, that after he falls in love with this woman who is unfaithful, it says, we won't be together. And he locks her up. She can't go out. She can't be unfaithful. Right? And he can't have her. She can't have him. But that's the beginning 
of repair. It's forcing them to realize, and that's what God wants. He wants to take away everything that he granted us. And I'm afraid where Am Yisrael is going today, we were given the biggest gift in the world. And Be'ezrat Hashem, this week, this coming week, we are commemorating Yom HaZikaron, um, L'chaylei Tzva Agana Yisrael, Shotrim, L'nifgei Ha'eva, but because of that, we have Yom HaTzva'ut. But Yom HaTzva'ut is supposed to remind us what we do have, not what we don't have, what we do have. We have a great state, a great state of Israel. But do we deserve Eretz Yisrael and Am Yisrael? I, I, I don't have the answer to that. I would love to say, yeah, we deserve it. But do we really deserve it? Yes, we definitely are in a great, a great situation. We have a lot of Torah, a lot of Torah. We have a lot of chesed too, a lot of gmachim, a lot of chesed, a lot of amutot that do wonderful things. We have a lot of good. We are we 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 are we're a very moral people, extremely moral. The way we are trying to handle you know the situation with our army versus our enemies, we're very very moral. But the one thing that we're lacking is probably one of the hardest things, and that is sinat chinam. And that's also what Chazal teach us is the reason for Kulban Beit HaMikdash. Sinat Chinam. And we're living it. We're in it. We, we see it. What are we doing about it? I, not enough, obviously. And I think that's what Hashem is saying, that the leadership is not taking the, the, the control, not taking the, the reins to try to make a difference on that. So we'll stop here. Mincha is uh, not too far away. Bezat um, Hashem, we will continue next week, Sunday, uh, in the middle of this really interesting perek of Tochicha. Um, the second half of Perek Dalid um, continues uh, more of what we uh, what we're learning about uh, those who are at fault. Um, and Perek uh, Hey, Perek Vav, Perek Zayin continues to elaborate, and there's so much we can learn. But I think what we're supposed to learn from this perek is emet, chesed, and da'at elokim ba'aretz. We focus on that. We focus on ahavat chinam. We'll be in a better shape than we are today, bevadai. So shavua tov. Enjoy, uh, enjoy this coming week. Enjoy yom ha'atzma'ut. Really, we should celebrate it. We should be happy. There's halel. It's an amazing, it's amazing. But we still have to go through a mizikon, which. Is a very difficult time for me personally. I've lost a couple of friends, unfortunately. Um, but Akol Me'ashamayim, and we all have to just be the best we can be, you know, and hopefully inspire those around us and maybe make some type of difference in this world. So Shavua Tov.